things just ain't the same for gangsters. The whole world's changed, everybody's a stranger. These young dudes running around saying they bangers. True indeed with you, holy circle gaming. Thank you for rocking with your boy, like always. Definitely a privilege and an honor to do as such. You see how we getting down, living room status. So you know what that means. It means there's another top five coming your way. So this top five is coming from my man, Fur. So shout out to my man, Fur. Big ups to him. He's going to bring to us this particular top five as broken down by yours truly. So you know how we do. Sit back. Relax. Let's get into it. First on Fur's top five, Gran Turismo. Very interesting choice when it comes to car racing games, of course. But when you talk about car racing games, you talk about realistic racers, it's hard not to mention Gran Turismo 5 because it's one of the best of the bunch. That is no question whatsoever. A lot of car games were based upon how well Gran Turismo did in particular as a franchise. Now, I love Gran Turismo. I like a lot of car racing games, but Gran Turismo is one of those racing games that is really, really official to me. Now, I know in first top five, he particularly picked Gran Turismo 5, and it's for a lot of great reasons too, and I'll dip into that really fast. I personally like Gran Turismo 2 because that was the one I first got integrated into the Gran Turismo franchise and it's still one of the best racing franchises of all time. And PlayStation and the squad that does Gran Turismo, y'all really need to get one out for the P4 sometime in the near future. That's just a quick shout out to them. Now, let me tell y'all why we should have Gran Turismo's in most people's top five. You ready? Let me break this down. First of all, it is graphically great. One of the things that Gran Turismo never skimped on was how good graphically the game looks. The way that the cars were modeled, it was true to life. You know, everything down to every little itty bitty detail, whether it was a standard Honda Civic or whether it was a Viper concept, it didn't matter the car. They took their time to make sure that game was graphically fantastic. So shout out to them. That was one of the greatest things about it. Second thing about that, going into like how graphically great it was, it was the how authentic the cars were too. Every single car that they had in the game was not a like, you know, one, maybe let me rephrase that. One or two were maybe like, you know, designed up from scratch, but every single car in that game was an actual car, whether it was a regular car that you could drive on the street or whether it was a concept car it was definitely a car that you could drive on the street so it was definitely official the way that they put all the authentic cars all on one game and put it all together and to tack on to that aspect what made the cars actually more official is that they actually handled and responded like the cars would in real life so if it was a front wheel drive car it actually handled like it was front wheel drive so you had to drive it completely different than as if it was a rear wheel drive and a real world car or let's say you was driving a Subaru for example which is all wheel drive you could actually have the cars respond in all wheel drive that's the one thing that they actually dialed in early on and in Gran Turismo 5 is when they brought all of those aspects together to make it work real world real cars real feel of the cars, all three of which made them made Gran Turismo 5 match up to any car racing game that you put in front of. The other thing that you got with Gran Turismo 5, which is very important, is that they use real courses too. I remember seeing a lot of footage where they took a lot of snapshots and a lot of footage of a lot of real world courses and they actually integrated those courses to the T. So anything from like the dips to the way that it handled on the turns. To so the way that the dirt was laid out, it was actually modeled very well in Gran Turismo, especially in Gran Turismo 5. But I think the most important thing I want to talk about when it comes to Gran Turismo in particular, I mean, it doesn't necessarily correspond with 5, but it corresponds to Gran Turismo as a franchise. You know what Gran Turismo did, which was extremely important? It made every other uh, video game developer who made a racing game adapt to what, the what they were doing. 
doing. So what they were doing was putting real cars, real courses, real handling, real everything as much as they possibly can to make their game work. That's what they built the brand on, and that's why Sony had it in one of its top four or five franchises that ever came out of the Sony camp was the Gran Turismo franchise. And that's the reason why. So it forced teams like the team that does Forza to match up to do what Gran Turismo did and in some respects try to expand on it and make it better. So it made games like Forza now phenomenal because they always knew that they always had direct competition with Gran Turismo. So it's definitely a great choice in first top five. So I definitely respect them for that. For me personally, I love Gran Turismo as a franchise. I think it's one of the greatest ones ever put together as far as like car racing games. It wouldn't be in my personal top five because I think I have Need for Speed like a notch more, but it's definitely a great choice by Fur. So Shout out to him. That's his first choice in this top five. Next up on Fur's top five, Shadow of the Colossus. Now, I know this ain't the first time you heard me talk about Shadow of the Colossus because it's been featured on other people's top five as well, but I am going to break down a couple of different aspects that I probably didn't cover on the first one. Maybe I did. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to go through them real fast. If you want to see a deeper breakdown, see some of my other top five footages, and you'll understand what I'm talking about when it comes to Shadow of Colossus. Definitely worthy of being a top five contender. That's first and foremost. One of the things that I have to give credit for, for Shadow of the Colossus that I didn't do in my previous coverage of this one is when they did Shadow of the Colossus by game design from scratch, it was some real out of the box thinking for the time. Basically, they crafted the game on this premise. Bosses and that's it. No build up to the bosses, no nothing. You just have boss after boss after boss. So everything was a boss fight. That's what they built the game on as far as like gameplay premise. And it was a very good premise to build upon because believe it or not, there is no other game that is designed the way Shadow of the Colossus is designed. You know, just going from boss to boss to boss with no buildup. Um, one of the other things that I will retouch on that I did talk about in the other um, Shadow of the Colossus um, breakdown is that it's a very difficult game. This is um, Shadow of Colossus at the time was touted as probably one of the most one of the top five games of difficulty to beat at that time. Next to Ninja Gaiden and Donkey Kong in order to flip it of course. But yeah, it was a very difficult game, very hard for people to kind of gravitate towards because it's very imposing. It is not for your casual gamer, even though I would recommend casual gamers to play it, especially at this point in time, because it's a definitely a different change of pace of games that we're getting right now, and it's definitely a different approach in gameplay. So shout out to the team that does Shadow of the Colossus. They do a fantastic job when they make this particular game, and so I'm looking, I'm looking forward to their upcoming games, most notably The Last Guardian, of course, is made by the same team, and so we'll see how that transpires and if they take some of the elements of Shadow of the Colossus and import it into The Last Guardian. So we'll see as we go along, but definitely a difficult game um, to master for sure. Um, one of the things that I would definitely say, it was visually great for its time too. It was definitely a game at its time that was visually strong. Another game like, like just as I was talking about with Gran Turismo, how the game was visually tight. For a PlayStation game, this game was very on point and people were blown away when they saw this particular game. Now, I'm going to give you that example in detail. So here's the story for you. I'm sitting at E3. One of the first booths I hit is the Sony booth. And so when I hit the Sony booth, I see this game. And I see these people like trying to, you know, figure out the controls, figure out how to play the game. But the one thing that you saw as far as like presence was the... Whoa, that game looks crispy. For real, and I'm like, I kid you not. That game looks so visually crispy that it was hard to really say anything bad about it. Even if the even if the game played horrible, it looked fantastic. But the kicker about this game is it not only looked great, it played as great as it possibly could. So definitely worthy of being in first top five for sure. And that's one thing that it tells me about Fur as far as like his gameplay choices. 
you know, two opposite styles of gameplay, but the one thing that's consistent about those is that graphically, it looks fantastic. And I know a lot of gamers, they put an onus on certain things when it comes to gameplay. Some people like the RPG elements in gameplay. Some people like it to control well. Other people like it to be visually appealing. That's one thing about Fur's list is that the games that he picked on there, um, at least the first couple of them that he picked were visually appealing. So I know that's important to him. And I know for me as a gamer, I know it's important to me too to have games that are visually appealing to me as well. So definitely a great choice by Fur putting this particular game in his top five, that Shadow of Colossus. There go that game again, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Now, I know you heard me break it down multiple times already. It's been featured in multiple people's top five, so I'm not gonna go into a big old speech and spill of how great this game is as far as like a fighting game is concerned. If you wanna see more breakdown on Marvel vs. Capcom 2, check out some of my previous top five footage and you'll hear a more extensive breakdown of Marvel vs. Capcom 2. But I am gonna touch upon a couple of quick aspects really fast. You know, I could tell you about the balance of characters, of course. Y'all gonna hear much more about balance of characters when it comes to Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on my previous post. I already talked to y'all about that, so y'all know the balance of characters is one of the biggest keys to why they made Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and why that game became special. Also, by it being a arcade favorite and a console favorite, believe it or not, you know, that's one of the things Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was also. In the age where Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat dominated, it was Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and maybe a couple of other ones that kind of trickled in that kind of put its place into the fighting game genre and actually made a big stamp on it to people to the point where people will not stop playing this game. They will play Marvel vs. Capcom even to this day. That's how official Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is. But I think the most important thing that I would tell you about Marvel vs. Capcom 2 that I didn't get a chance to cover is simply this. You know what it did? It actually helped Street Fighter do without having to brand it under the Street Fighter title. Meaning that it gave Street Fighter characters more balance and to be able to flip between characters really fast. It's one of those things that Capcom wanted to do under its own title, under the Street Fighter title, but never really wanted to like test the waters to see if it was going to be official to kind of tag in and out like they did with Tekken Tag at this time, you know, but they were actually able to integrate those elements into Marvel vs. Capcom 2, which was actually a beautiful concept because what it did was allow Street Fighter to be Street Fighter, one-on-one -on -one combat, balance the characters out in that regard, and then they allowed the tag combat with Marvel vs. Capcom, but even with that being said, it also allowed for the extra balance of characters by adding the, the Marvel characters into the mix to balance out the tag aspect. So it wasn't just, I'm going to tag in one or two, you can actually tag in a set of three versus another three, which is very important because I knew that they probably want to try that under the Street Fighter franchise, but they didn't want to throw the dice and take a chance on it because if it didn't work out to their liking, it was under the Street Fighter banner and not under a different title altogether. Even though their characters were attached to Marvel vs. Capcom, it was one of those one-offs where they just wanted to try it out and see, and the masses who liked fighting games actually gravitated towards it, and so that's why it became a prime player, because it was different enough than Street Fighter to make it have its own stamp, even though it featured the Street Fighter characters. So, you know, so thinking of the concepts like what would it be like if I had Chung Li and Ryu? You could do that in uh, and you could do that in Marvel vs. Capcom, but you couldn't necessarily do that in Street Fighter. So they tested it out there. So it was very important for them to come out with Marvel vs. Capcom for that regard to kind of test it out, and they just kind of hit a gold mine with it. So shout out to the Capcom team for making that happen. But that's just one of the quick things I wanted to touch on is Marvel vs. Capcom. But being in first top five, no questions in a lot of people's top five, and that's kind of the biggest premise that I came across is like one of the games has been consistent as far as like top five breakdowns 
is Marvel vs. Capcom. Now, is it the highest selling game of all time? No. Is it the most played game of all time? No. But is it one of the most respected game of all times? Absolutely. So Marvel vs. Capcom 2, definitely a great choice in first top five. Let's get into that. Metal Slug 3. Now, when Fur actually put this into the conversation, it was a very interesting choice because it's one of those games that when you think about it on premise, it's like, wow, that's kind of a hard game to kind of weave into top five status. But when you really kind of think about it, it's really not that hard to kind of really understand why Fur put this into his top five. I just thought it was just a very out-of-the-box interesting choice as far as like top five games of all time, his personal top five, but I didn't think it was a bad choice either. I thought it was actually a very solid choice because Metal Slug 3, you know, does a lot of things really right. You know, as far as like arcade games is concerned. Yeah, it was a very fun arcade game. It was very, you know, the controls on the game, simple, tight, very fluid, you know, uh, you know, simple enough so anybody could jump on the sticks, whether they were playing on the PlayStation or whether they were playing in the arcade. It was very simple for somebody to pick up the controls and kind of just blast away and figure out the game. But that was kind of like the gift and the curse because it was so easy to get your hands on and easy to kind of get the basic of the controls. What made the game, you know, great was it was simple and complex all in the same token. It wasn't a it wasn't a simple game as far as like beating the game. That's where the difficulty came into play. It was just a simple game because graphically I don't think it was nothing special about the game, but the controls were super simple. Super easy to figure out which way to move the controller and the buttons you need to push in order to side scroll and go through some of the aspects of the game. But it was difficult because when the gameplay started to ramp up, it was waves after waves after waves of enemies and then when you got to boss sections where you had to you know do certain objectives it was really difficult to really go through and beat the game there is very few people who i know who could beat this game on maybe one or two runs without dying and I'm not saying that it can't be done. I'm just saying it's not an easy game in theory. But those are the things that I really liked about Metal Slug 3. For a game, a co-op game, fantastic. Primo choice. Not bad when it comes to co-op games. When it comes to control schemes, control schemes, like I told you, simple, fluid, translated well on console as well as arcade, top notch. You know, difficulty, you know, easy enough for your casual players, difficult enough for your hardcore players, can't be mad at that. So prefer to actually put this in his top five was a very interesting choice. Would it be in my personal top five? No. But would I sit there and actually get down and, and get in the arcade and actually spin this game or maybe fire up my PlayStation and play this game? Absolutely. That's one of the games that I would actually play with him. If he said, hey, yo, true. I want you to come through, we're going to go to the arcade, and we're going to rock this game. I'll be like, cool, I'm down. I almost wish that they would actually put this up on like the, the PSN network or maybe do it co-op in some sort of fashion or maybe do a redo of this game because it would be a good, fun co-op game to play, a good throwback game, a good, fun game, and definitely a great choice by Fur when he picked Metal Slug 3 to be in his top five. And last up on the list in first top five, Mega Man Legends 2. Wow. Now, when I heard Fur talk about Mega Man Legends 2, I know I'm doing it fifth on the list, but this was actually his very first game that came out of his mouth. Now, here's the honest answer. I never got down and played a lot of Mega Man 2. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. So, 
I can't really say if it's 100% official or not because I haven't played enough of it to really say that. So I'm going to be grown man and honest and tell you that. But I will tell you that it being a part platformer, part RPG, that is a very beautiful bridge. Now, is Mega Man Legends better than some of the old school Mega Man series? I would venture to say yes because it expanded on a lot of things that they were trying to do in the original Mega Man series but what they did that was very key which a lot of games do now was add the RPG element and anytime you can add an RPG element where it's a little bit more stat based where you could kind of ramp up your character to kind of cater it to your play style I think that's a beautiful thing and that's one of the things that they did in Legends 2 you know now was it a perfect rendition of it no because it was early on when like game developers were really trying to test and get a feel for how does the rpg element really play an effect uh, especially on games like platforming games and but you know you kind of got a taste of it with legend of zelda where it was you know deemed as an rpg but it's more like action rpg um this is more like action platformer you know same concept RPG elements, but it's definitely a platformer in its core, and it's a great one. Still, tell you what, control schemes, still tight, still fluid, especially on the PlayStation, nothing bad about that. But the one thing I will tell you about this game is that it's not a simple game. This is a very difficult game, too. This is not an easy game to play. It looks all cutesy. I'm going to tell you right now. Visually, you know, looks all unimposing, cartoonish characters, cartoon gameplay, storylines kind of okay, not great, not nothing, to, not nothing horrible by any stretch. But when you play the game, the game is extremely difficult to get through. Um, most of your good gamers could make your way through this game, but your casual gamers, probably not. But it's going to look like and feel like a casual game in every sense of the word, but it's not going to play like that once it starts ramping up. But it's definitely a great choice. Like I said, admittedly, I haven't played it, so I can't put my stamp of approval to say yes or no. But hearing it out of Fur's mouth, he puts his stamp of approval like it's the best game on the planet. Now, I ain't mad at him. I just don't know if that's the case because Mega Man, to me, was a solid franchise in its entirety. It's just not one of those franchises that I gravitated towards. I'm just going to be honest with you. I gravitated towards other franchises as opposed to Mega Man. But that's not a knock against Mega Man. That's not to say that it's bad or it's one of those games that it was like, I wasn't going to play, you know, wasn't going to be a, it was a bad game for me or wasn't going to play at all. It was just one of those ones that was like, eh, it's Mega Man. That was my approach. But to other people like Fur, it, this is like his game. This is his get down. This is a game that he actually have the ROM on the phone and he's playing. This is his get down. So I'm not even mad at him putting it on his top five. And the reason why is because how passionately he talks about Mega Man, I understand. Because there's a handful of games that I talk passionately about too. And you're going to get that when I break down my top five. But when he was breaking down his top five, this was the very first game Fur mentioned out of his mouth. And it's a great one. So salute to him putting it on there. Even though it may not be the masses appeal of a top five, it's his top five. And that's what I was looking for. Games that you're passionate about, games that you would rock with, games that you say that I will play over and over again, and here's the reason why. And that's what Fur gave to me when he broke down Mega Man Legends 2 in his top five. So salute to him. So there you have him. This is Fur's. Top 5, Shadow of the Colossus, you know it got the goods, just like Marvel vs. Capcom 2, you know that game has the goods too, it's in a lot of people's top 5. Metal Slug 3, very interesting choice, love it because it's co-op, Gran Turismo, the granddaddy of realistic racing games, nod your head to that, and Mega Man Legends 2, the game that Fur is most passionate about. Not mad at the list at all. Great top five submitted by him. So y'all see him. Y'all tell me if y'all like him. Y'all tell me if y'all don't like him. Y'all tell me if y'all would sub some games out of those top five. Y'all tell me what you think. But I personally think this is a great composition 
of what a top five is. So that's how we do it, y'all. Another top five, another top five breakdown. We're going to do it again soon while I break down another top five and see what y'all like about those. But until then, you know how we get down. For myself, Mr. True and Dean, you know what I represent, Holy Circle Gaming. You know how we do. It's God above everything. Until the next time, family. Thank <laughs> you.